Hi everyone and welcome to another piano review video here at Marion Pianos. My name is Stu Harrison. We're coming to you from the Robert Lowry showroom in downtown Toronto and today we are going to be reviewing the Schimmel K230. This is a semi-concert grand, part of Schimmel's very top line of grand pianos. They call it the concert with a K and a Z. It's very fancy. Uh, wide tail design, lots of great and interesting stuff to learn about this instrument. So uh, thank you so much for joining us. We think we're really going to enjoy this video. If it is the first time that you've had a chance to visit us here at Mary Pianos on YouTube, we would really appreciate it if you did subscribe. Uh, it's exciting to see new people joining us every uh, every day. We've recently passed the 10,000 subscriber mark, which is awesome. Uh, leave comments uh, and join the community. That's what it's all about. Loving pianos, learning more about pianos, uh, and interacting with this great group of people. So without further ado, let's get started with the K230 right away. We're in front of the Schimmel Concert K230, as we mentioned, obviously, in the intro. And it's part of Schimmel's concert class. This is a series of instruments which have gone through relatively recent, uh, you know, complete uh, redesigns. Uh, and so there's all kinds of really cool technical stuff to get into this piano. Uh, and uh, you know from uh, other reviews that I've done that I love digging in to the more te technical aspects of what creates piano tone, where it all comes from. I mean, I love the mystique of an instrument uh, that gives you, uh, this, you know, colors and, and all of this, these uh, kind of undefinable musical experiences. But I love attaching that to the technical side and understanding uh, really where it comes from. Because uh, that's where, you know, craft meets, meets the magic of the music. Uh, the K230 is a part of their concert lineup that starts uh, down with the K175. Uh, then there's a K195, there's a K219, K230, which one we're in front of right here, uh, and then finally their full concert grand. So the 230 is their semi-concert grand. And there are aspects of every one of those models uh, which are uh, common throughout the entire line. Uh, and as you dig into these instruments, uh, there's a few things that immediately come to mind. One is that, you know, Kawhi is a brand that I have a lot of experience with, a lot of familiarity with, and, and certainly I, I enjoy quite a few of their instruments. And the more I learn about Schimmel, the more it kind of reminds me almost of the Kawhi of Germany. This is a company that is constantly obsessed with using latest technology to try and improve and push the design limits of their grand pianos. Uh, they have been known for quite a while as major innovators uh, of, with the uh, use of computer-aided uh, design, CAD technology, as well as CNC machinery in their factories. Uh, and the products that they push out just are, are really uh, setting new thresholds and, and uh, you know, new goals in terms of the sound efficiency that you can get out of a grand piano design. And so there's a bunch of stuff on the Schimmel that on first glance you might miss, uh, but you know, really contribute greatly to improved sustain, uh, definitely improved uh, projection in certain tonal areas of the piano, uh, and improved color, uh, meaning a better array or a better uh, balance of those upper harmonics. That's, you know, when people are talking about color, it's usually what it's referring to uh, is that specific profile of upper harmonics that accompany uh, the fundamental tone. So I'm going to play the instrument for a minute or two so that we have a, a reference point, a starting point, so we can hear what it is that we're then going to break down.
just awesome sustain going on there. Um, I'm going to describe the tone uh, as it's reaching my ears and we're going to talk about the components that I think are contributing to that. So as you play this piano, one of the really interesting sonic effects that you get, and I have had this happen on very, very few instruments, uh, and it's not something I necessarily miss when it's not there, but I think it's such a cool um, experience as a piano player when you get it. This piano produces very distinct uh, layers, the impression of a very distinct layer of tone uh, from each region of the instrument that you play. And so what happens when you uh, are playing something throughout the range is you actually, it's almost like you could visually see the, uh, the uh, kind of the tonal ranges stacking up like layers in front of you. You can hear uh, where, uh, you know, your lower tenor range uh, is, is sort of structured and your upper, upper treble range is structured and it's just so well defined rather than being uh, kind of a nice um, mix blended. I mean, people talk about clarity versus blending, but this is something more than that. There's almost a three dimensional aspect to how this sound constructs itself within the piano. Uh, and that's something that I've rarely experienced. It's something that um, I, I uh, have heard a couple of times on some Busendorfer Imperials. I've heard this on a Ravenscroft that I got a chance to play uh, at NAMM. Um, but it's not something that you get as an effect on, for example, a Steinway. This is not something that the piano does. As I said, this isn't, you would never miss it if you didn't, because normal pianos just don't do this. So uh, I, I'm making kind of a big deal of this because uh, it's, I think it's a result, direct result of some of the design innovations that Schimmel uh, has taken on this. So this really well-defined kind of three-dimensional construct of, of tone as you're playing this piano. Um, there is not quite as much upper color on this instrument as I would get out of, say, a Beckstein. And this is where these two instruments really uh, differentiate themselves. When I play the C. Beckstein concert series, you know, that's a piano where I'm getting just insane levels of detail and tremendous amounts of uh, uh, control uh, and color, uh, especially in the lower dynamic ranges. What I'm getting on the Schimmel in a lower dynamic range is more almost a bit of a wash rather than this like really tight, precise, you know, highly defined tone. Uh, it's, it's kind of uh, more a bit of an ethereal. So it's, it's, it's just a different uh, type of playing experience on this piano. Um, the bass on this 230 absolutely beats, hands down, half the nine foot pianos I've ever played in my life. That's not hyperbole. So not only do you have clarity in that lower range, but there's an enormous amount of projection uh, and just energy. Uh, and so some of that is coming from the fact that there is a huge soundboard uh, on this piano. And so let's get into now talking about the aspects of this instrument that are contributing to everything we've talked about. This sort of the shimmering sound, this very, very uh, interesting kind of three-dimensional uh, uh, sort of um, uh, sound profile that you're getting, you feel like it's right in, the, right in front of you, like you can literally see the layers, uh, and then this huge expansive bass um, on this instrument. Uh, so one of the things that the concert series pianos have in common uh, are these extra large soundboards, and I don't know whether uh, this is something that's uh, uh, factual or this is more anecdotal, but my impression is that for the length of the instrument, the Schimmel Concert Series has to have one of the largest soundboard areas of any piano in the entire business. Uh, they go with a wide tail design, uh, first of all, so that's already going to give them extra real estate where most pianos do not have that wide, wide tail design. But then the other thing is, the instruments from the front 
actually uh, have an angle out so that by, by the time you get a foot and a half or two feet back into the piano's design, it's already wider than it was at the front, which is another interesting kind of unusual uh, design feature. That's to accommodate, uh, again, just uh, an extra large soundboard. So you're getting huge amounts of area uh, that's av av available uh, for activation from a sound standpoint. Uh, the second thing that is, I think, de definitely contributing to such clarity in the bass is the very unique way in which they bridge uh, the bass section. So all of the bridges on the concert series are vertically laminated. That gives a, a, a tremendous amount of clarity and um, a color that's able to pass from the string to the soundboard um, without you know, getting too compressed or, or biased or filtered out by one particular kind of wood. But the bass bridge uh, is particularly interesting because it is a single piece bass bridge, but that part that kind of wraps around those, the two different bass bridge sections that kind of looks like the candy cane um, on a grand piano, typically that part that wraps around is also attached to the soundboard. But when you think about it, there's no real string input occurring on there. So uh, I guess Schimmel's engineers uh, more or less thought, well, we're not going to actually have that connect to the soundboard, but we are going to connect the two bridges together. Uh, and so they leave that open. There's actually a gap um, as the bridge loops around. Uh, so it's connected, the bridges are connected, but the soundboard is left free to vibrate in that section. And I, I honestly, it feels like you can absolutely tell the difference. You're getting uh, just way more activation out of the bass range than I'm used to. There's another aspect of the design of the Schimmel uh, which if you, un unless you're looking carefully, you might miss. But this is a, a fairly simple design innovation, but you really don't see it very often, which is tri-chord bass strings. What, what is that? Well, it just means um, that those three strings that everybody's used to seeing through the rest of the piano, but not in the bass section, is actually down in the bass section. Um, and this virtually eliminates any sense of the break, that transition between uh, the steel strings down into the copper strings at all. In fact, if I close my eyes and I didn't know the piano, I'm not sure I would be able to even tell you where it switches from steel to copper. The transition is that seamless. And so not only do you have steel strings on this K230 going much lower than typically in pianos, uh, I know on a lot of the Yamahas and Kawais it switches right around the B or the C, where we've got steel trichords all the way down uh, to, what is that, two Fs below middle C. Uh, and then it switches into trichord copper strings, which you, is very unusual on a piano. And then by chords all the way down to literally just the bottom fifth of the piano is single copper bass strings. So if as if we needed any more reasons uh, to talk about you know, the projection and just the sheer amount of power and energy that's coming out of this bass. Well, here's yet another reason why we've got so much power and energy coming out of the bass. Uh, and so combined with the bridge that we were talking about, uh, combined with that extra thickened rim down in the bass section as well, it's no wonder this piano is putting out just so many uh, just like decibels of bass tone um, out of this instrument. Um, as we travel, you know, from the bass up through the treble, um, another really interesting aspect of, of what Schimmel does is there are tunable duplex scales on both the front and the rear. And this is something that is um, not seen very often. Tunable duplex generally is fairly unusual in the industry. Fazioli has tunable duplex. Um, but uh, to my knowledge, or the last time I uh, was really under the hood of a Fazioli, I believe that was only on uh, the rear. Uh, but 
on the shimmel, and we'll make sure that we get some B-roll of this, there's actually a tunable, you know, a movable fulcrum um, behind uh, the, the capo or the pressure bar as well as uh, behind the bridge. The fact that it's uh, very precisely tuned um, and there's all of this extra uh, resonant uh, potential in the treble is what gives you that shimmer. If that uh, uh, those front and rear duplexes were not tuned, so they were just slightly out of tune, what you'd wind up with is a much sharper, um, more uh, projecting treble, uh, because of course pipe organ people will know this, when you've got mixtures which are uh, slightly out of tune, you have sort of these uh, intersecting and conflicting uh, harmony or harmonics, you actually wind up with a much louder sound. Um, but when you are compounding highly in tune stuff, you, you sort of wind up with this almost reverberant effect right within the piano itself. Uh, it doesn't necessarily create a sharper tone, it just feels like there's more air around the tone uh, that's, that's just completely and fully in tune. It's really cool stuff. Um, so that's pretty much everything I have to say about uh, the tone of the instruments and the parts of the piano that are contributing this. Uh, one last thing before we move on to the action. If you get underneath this piano and you look at the rim, um, the left side rim on this instrument has got to be the thickest I have ever seen on any grand piano. I mean, we are talking about a rim that's honestly got to be uh, close to like 9, 10 inches uh, in width. And I thought the Mason and Hamlin stuff was, was pretty darn thick. Uh, this tops it by a mile. And so uh, getting that extra rigidity through the frame um, and uh, creating even more opportunity for uh, a very nice um, sort of high uh, pressure connection between all of those um, wooden uh, joining components on the bottom, I think is probably creating even more cabinet resonance than what you're normally able to get out of a grand. Really cool engineering stuff um, and just such a different uh, playing experience. I'm, I'm enjoying it a lot. Moving on to the touch and moving on to the action. Uh, one of the other notable things that the new concert series has done is they are putting a concert action in every single K series grand, regardless of the size. So I'm just gonna say that one more time. There's a concert grand action, not concert grand like action or you know some kind of spinny word. Literally, you're, you've got a nine foot concert action in every single uh, K series grands. So for high level players who are really focused on control, really focused on uh, kind of the maximum range that you're able to get out of your instrument, a uh, concert uh, grand action is going to deliver that. Uh, that's going to be just, uh, you know, a, uh, something, uh, a tool in your toolbox that very few other pianos uh, would really be able to deliver. Um... I mean, concert grand actions, especially when they're really well regulated, makes you want to kind of just jump all over the keyboard like it's a trampoline. It's so fun because with very little uh, effort, you can get these extra colors that you're just not used to uh, when you're dealing with a grand with much shorter key sticks. Um, so there you have it, folks. The K230 uh, from Schimmel 
has probably got to be one of the most unique uh, grand playing experiences that I have had on a semi-concert grand in a long, long time and definitely in this price range. Because let's remember, the concert series compared to some of the other high-level uh, European pianos of the same build quality uh, is a little bit less. This is something of a bargain and this is where I also compare back to my uh, one of the original statements I made in the video about Kawhi. Um, because I happen to think that the Shigeru Kawai piano is one of the best built pianos on the planet right now and I would put the Shimmel Concert Series, although musically they're quite different, in terms of the spirit of innovation and the value they're delivering, it's just off the charts. Uh, anyway, if you have an opportunity to get to a showroom where one of these K-Series Grands, whether it's the 230, 219, 195, whatever it is, happens to be sitting, whether or not you are in the market for an instrument or not, I would strongly encourage you to go and see what Schimmel has done with this series. It's so cool. Uh, and see whether you can also hear what I'm trying to, my best, to describe this kind of three-dimensional, you know, layers of sound coming from different parts of the piano. Because uh, that is uh, probably one of the most uh, memorable things about playing this instrument for me. Uh, thank you so much for watching. Hope you've enjoyed the video. Leave a comment. Let us know what you thought. Maybe you've had a chance to play some of these, so I'd love to hear your observations as well. Uh, again, my name is Stu Harrison. This has been the Miriam Pianos YouTube channel coming to you from the Robert Lowry Showroom. Uh, so we will see you back for more videos in the future. Have yourself a great day.